Easy, lads. Now, I'm sure you're all road men, gangsters, proper naughty boys, and all that bollocks. But I come in peace. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Zareth Prevails. Today we're going to talk about the best 5v5 teams out there from my smallest account available, which is an 8.2 monstrosity at this point. It keeps it keeps growing, which is uh, <laughs> what she said resignedly. And unfortunately guys, that's just what we have to work with here. Um, this account is the, the smallest I have. And we're going to talk about what teams are best in 5v5 for the current meta. I, well, I, this is a labor of love, honestly, guys. This is my only attempted long form content for the month. I know that some of my other videos do tend to go a little longer than most, and I, I'm actually working on that, believe it or not. Um, but this, this is, this you typically lasts about an hour. And we just go through all the different teams on the smallest account that I have so that we don't leave the smaller accounts behind. Yes, I realize it does leave some smaller accounts behind, but this is an account that is functioning at a very high level in the sense that it only has two Galactic Legends. It's at 8 million, and it made it into Kyber when it was, I think, a little less than 7 million. And uh, now I'm in Kyber 2 at, at 8 million. It, it's, it's atrocious. How do I stay in Kyber 2? I've stayed in Kyber 2 for a few months now, which means it's not a fluke. Or maybe it is with the squish being what it is and all that nonsense and all that bollocks. I don't know if I'm allowed to use that word. But um, <laughs> do you have to be from England to actually say that word when you're not quoting something? But... Uh, I, I don't, don't worry guys, I'm not going to start using it. Don't, don't you worry. What we are going to do though is discuss how, how to stay in these higher Kyber levels and how to beat some of these accounts. Find, finding ways to just beat the hell out of accounts that have 6 GLs, 7 GLs, 8 GLs, you know, 3 million more GP than us, 5 million more sometimes. It, it's totally ludicrous. And uh, it's not all luck. It's not all just like, oh, they're a they're apathetic. They don't care. It's some of it's like, oh, we actually just destroyed that guy because we know what we're doing. So uh, you guys don't need to stare at me much longer. The, I mean, you can stare at me all you want, obviously. But I, I recommend just pausing it right here. There we go. Don't do that. I feel bad for you if you did actually pause it there. But uh, let, let's do acknowledge that I also have a 5v5 best defensive teams out there. This is from my main account. It's all the advanced teams. It's all of the the best and most experimental tech out there. Um, I'm out, totally outing myself for people who watch it. They'll be like, oh, that's what Zareth's going to take. Yeah, absolutely. Same with offense. People know what my initial thoughts are. Uh, you can find the links to these videos in the video description, or they were the videos that I created literally the day before this, so they're just one back in the list. Um, huge shout out to my patrons. You guys are awesome. I couldn't do this without you guys. Thank you so much for all your support, guys. And if you want to support this channel for free, folks, all you got to do is hit that thumbs up button, like, subscribe, comment, mount the algorithm. It's like doing the do, except you're not you're not doing that. You're actually mounting the algorithm. You have to choose, guys. You can't have both. I'm sorry. That's that's just not it's not a thing. You can't have both. Uh, I wish I I don't even make the rules. That's they called me one day. They were like, "Hey, listen, Zareth, bad news. You can't do the do and mount the alg." I was like, "Okay, fine." I didn't really care, to be honest. Let's move on. All right, so this is my account, guys. Prevail Man. This is my smallest account. You can come watch me play, or if you don't want to show up as late as I intend to play, you can always just show up to the replay, the video replay on Twitch. You can find the link in the video description. It's free to watch. Obviously, there's going to be some ads on it if you want to support me more. You can subscribe to that channel, and I will thank you a million. Um, and 
Uh, you can even, if you have an Amazon Prime su subscription or membership, you can actually just subscribe for free. And it helps the streamer. It helps you by not having to watch ads. It is all around really neat. So here, here we are, guys. We're we're in, we're in the game. We're on Prevail Man. You can see the 8.2 madness there. And before we do that, guys, what I want to do, and I, I've I've done this every time. So I remake this list every month because I have new characters, I have new updates, and the meta changes, I do want to look at a couple different things. Well, first, let's look at the Datacron sets so you can understand what what we're looking at, what we're, what we're trying to accomplish. So, uh, typically, guys, here's, here's, here's just the, the hard but uh, honest truth. If someone knows what they're doing really well, if they're really good at this game, and they have way more GP than me, they're gonna beat our asses. They, they just are. We're, we're just gonna get destroyed because I play this account with $10 a month. I, I pay for, I, I log in once once every day, essentially. Maybe two times a day if, it, if it's really lucky, if it's good, been a good boy. But for the most part, I log in once a day and I also spend $10 on the Conquest pack uh, which gives me the ability to, <laughs> I mean, kind of catch up in all the energy that I've lost, in all of the everything that I've lost. Uh, in Conquest, I only do Crate 5. I do Crate 5. Sometimes I'll go one past that. I think this account could probably, I don't know if I could get 7th crate, which is red crate. I'm sure I could get 6th crate if I really wanted, but I don't really want. I don't. I just don't care. I really, we're good here, but we get all those bonus shards and everything and what ends up happening, and you can find the video to this, guys. I do one or two every conquest, like, season or whatever. Uh, trying to update people and keep people current on conquest is... We do it the lazy way, because there's no way I'm doing Conquest twice on each account, or, uh, you know, on my on my two accounts, I can't do it with Red Crate both times. It's just too much of a headache, usually. So my main account, yes, it's a whale account, well, whale light, kind of, but uh, I still spend money on it. I get Red Crate there, and then on my smallest account, which is this one, I get Fifth Crate, and we unlock our characters every six months instead of every three months, which means I'm almost caught up on Conquest characters here, folks. Uh, it's it's a remarkable feeling. It feels nice. Uh, so we just unlocked Bane. We have Bane available. We had him available for, I think, one week last season. So that was neat. Uh, and he actually didn't do that much. It was kind of disappointing. But we do have Bane available. And uh, we're working on... We're working on... Uh, wh what's her name? Padme? Queen Amidala. So, anyways, we do have Stap. We have the Stap Cron. And, and really, the other thing that you have to realize about an account like this, folks, and if you want to get ahead in GAC, I'll, I'll just tell you this. My favorite strategy is just... Ah, oh, man. I feel it's chasing the data cron. I feel like I'm I'm one of those hunter-gatherer tribes that, that we talked about in... in uh, kindergarten or what, whatever like grade school where the tribe would just follow the buffalo around or you know and they, they that's like what they would do and so they'd be like yeah I don't really know exactly where we're gonna be living from from year to year we're just following where food happens to be and um so that that's really like a lot of times that will the datacron schedule the datacron releases will kind of inform my roster decisions to at least some extent. Uh, so, a lot of times, it's, and that that really means that a lot of times we don't get Galactic Legends because Galactic Legends, when they come out with a Datacron, I'm like, that's too much of a stretch. Like this account can't get to that point. So we don't chase Galactic Legends. I do. Uh, so I said that I spent money on the uh, uh, on Conquest Pass, and that's true. I the other thing that I've spent money on on this account, folks, is. I've I've spent money on uh, the light speed bundles. I almost all of them, not all of them, but most of them. And so I have uh, little pockets of farming that that have helped. Uh, and it's been less than a year that this account has grown over four million because of light speed bundles, including Supreme Leader Kylo and Ray, which happens to be a really good time for us because we have a 
We have a Datacron set that has Rey and Supreme Leader Kylo in it. Um, so what are we trying to accomplish with Datacrons? Well, first off, Datacrons are, I've said it before, and, and I'll say it again, folks. Datacrons are what separates us from animals. They're what makes us into actual humans. It, it, it's a little, it's a rarely known fact, you know? You hear people debating whether it's like, you know, do we follow and adhere to laws, you know, or do we have the ability to think at a higher level? Do we have religion? Whatever. No, it's it's Datacrons, folks. That's that's the rare, rarely known fact. And so that also helps us in a huge way because a lot of my opponents are opponents that I'm punching way up in. They have way more GP, way bigger roster, sometimes way more mods. But when I know that we're in trouble is when they have as many Datacrons as I do. Because I don't have great mods on this account. I don't have time to spend on a ton of mods. I do spend time on modding, but not, not as much as would be ideal. I have three accounts. I can't mod things as meticulously as I would like to, and so uh, Datacrons are kind of the equalizer for me. So the things that we're looking for here, folks, um, you know, I have a Kellerin Beck. I rushed Kellerin Beck on this account so I could use his Datacron. And that was a little bit a little bit of a disappointment, but it's not too bad. Um, I do have Jedi Cal farmed because I believe in the power of farming non-accelerated characters. So sue me, but Man, it's been so nice to kill Malgus teams, especially the poorly modded Malgus teams that you meet in Upper Kyber 3 and Lower Kyber 2. Um, and, and then we have the Holdocron, we have the Banecron, like all characters that are really good. Stap is going to help us kill uh, Leia, which is really nice. And obviously we have to, with only two GLs, and I typically only place, I place both of my Galactic Legends in fives, uh, we have to be able to find a way to kill all the Galactic Legends, even if we don't have a GL of our own. And so, I actually have my the guild that I'm in has unlocked Reva for me. So I have a Reva Kron. It's really awkward to have one though. I like what? What do you even do with a Reva Kron? Um, like, what do you even do with Reva? It, it's kind of fun to have, though. And so I'll, I'll be using her this season. I just finally got her Relic 5. Um, the rest of my Inquisition are absolute trash. Uh, but then we do have Padme. We don't have Kenobi, but we have Cat. We have lots of things. The biggest thing and biggest part of this, and I know I've gone way too long about Datacrons here, folks. I'm going to... Maybe I'll try to add timestamps here. That seems like a lot of work, but maybe I'll do that for you. Labor of love. We'll just do timestamps so you guys can get to the actual content if you don't want me to just preach about Datacrons. Now, I have a lot of blank ones. I, I doubt that I'm going to end up farming all of them, honestly, or, or boosting all of them. But I, I might end up boosting quite a few because the biggest part of this set, after you get the really essential level 9s, which there are just only... A, for this account, there's only a couple. Uh, once you get those, though, the biggest part, guys, is this level 3. And you, everyone can get a lot of these. This is really good. They're, I call them thick crons. So, 15% max health and max protection for each other dark side ally. So, whatever alignment you are, you want to have as many of those on your team as possible to maximize that either dark side or light side advantage. You end up with 75% max health and max protection, plus whatever other stats you have. But that, that's a pretty nice boost. That's almost doubling your effective hit points and for, for your entire team. Now, you don't have any other defensive stats unless you have the crit avoid uh, which i've kind of just avoided farming to be honest but every team my my goal is always guys uh, i don't like having a lot of gear 12 i do end up having some gear 12 it's just an inevitable choke point and bottleneck but you want your goal should be to get your guys to relic 3 so that they can have these really foundational really important datacrons so then people go in they're like dude I don't use Datacrons, but I don't need them. Oh man, why did Ray just destroy me? Well, it's because Ray, <laughs> Ray is better than you. No, uh, I mean she is, but the biggest part is, Ray with double hit points is an entirely different animal than Ray with not double hit points. Uh, you know, Datacrons. Not to mention, you can get all the offense. You can get armor shred, which armor shred on a Ray team is not, or armor pierce. I mean, what is that? Armor pen? Yeah. Uh, is is not maybe like the very best thing, but 
Anyways, we're, we're kind of just rambling here. So the goal here, guys, is to get a Kron on most teams. And then we're just going to, uh, we'll, we'll do the best we can here. I'm going to pause. I'm going to write down this timestamp so I don't have to look it up again. Hold on. Okay, so we're, we're back. Now, what I want to do, folks, is I want to show you what I did in my last 5v5 season. We're going to look at my defenses, and I'll show you what I did, a little bit at least. And then we're going to go into the actual game. So one of the things that I've done on this account, and I don't know if it hasn't felt like it's borne a ton of fruit yet, but I do have two Galactic Legend level ships, which, I mean, in Kyber 2, that's nothing to write home about, but I, I can't get Leviathan because I don't have Malgus yet. I have his ship ready, but I don't have Malgus himself, so I do have four-star profundity, though, and I haven't spent the crystals yet to boost him up to five stars. I would love to get him to seven stars one day. That's important and all that, but um, then I don't have the good Sith fleet yet because I, again, don't have all the or the Empire Fleet, because I don't have the Scythe unlocked yet. Like, I don't have Grand Inquisitor unlocked. I don't have a good fifth brother anyways. I don't have a good second sister, for that matter. I don't even have a good Iden. Very un unfortunately, I do have everything farmed, of course, because uh, I'm pretty diligent on farming, at least. But anyways, who cares about ships, really? I put Profundity there just to trip people up and make them real scared and use their best ship there. And then the rest of them, they're like, oh yeah, I have some mediocre fleets, and they can fight my mediocre fleets. And usually, mediocre players aren't good at adapting to things. Now... Here's what I've done in the past. We used to have the double Revan defense, which always cracked me up, but uh, Jedi Revan is too important now for on offense for me to be able to do that, unfortunately. So, ooh, and we gotta take Grievous off of defense here, guys. He is very important for us here. Let's just get rid, uh, I'll, even if I give my opponents a free squad uh, because I forget to update my defenses, we got to do that right now because that, that's an important squad. Now, I, I used to put double Revan defense and I said that jokingly because, uh, you know, the goal here on defense, folks, is not to overwhelm them with amazing teams. It's to force them into making decisions on if they're a mediocre player where are their tripping points? Where are their sticking points? Where are they going to fail sometimes so that if they can only clear half the board, I can clear three zones or maybe four if, they, if they're if they kind on ships. It just depends on what, what kind of fleets they have because I don't have complete fleet dominance yet. But uh, where can I add some pretty bad teams as fluff and it not really hurt my overall strategy? So the idea is have a few teams that trip people up and mess with them. You know, have a few teams that could potentially just stop them entirely, and then the rest is kind of just gonna be fluff. So you see on the bottom zone, we have the Dar the full Darth Revan team here, and that's gonna stay there because without Malgus, this team is not that good on defense, frankly. Um, and a lot of people don't know cheap counters. They'll use a Galactic Legend to Darth Revan. Even though they're all Relic 3, that, that's scary to people. Ironically, um, <laughs> my Talon is the highest Relic there. It's very silly, guys. I, I have enormous Bronzium issues on this account. Just, it, it's alarming, frankly. It's very alarming. Um, Now, we have Ewoks. They're pretty neat. They're Murder Bears. Uh, this is cool to see. They're all bright blue. What I need to do, though... So this is this is one of the things I'm talking about. Oh, the best version of this team, even though we could put a Datacron on that squad, what we really want to do... Well, here, I didn't mean to click on Datacron, sorry. What we really want to do, guys, is add Nisa. And actually, I recently got a bunch of work done. Um, <laughs> they, they just had those those bonus drops for Nisa for buying mods, so I... I I farmed her as much as I could through that. We're close to getting her to seven stars. We're gonna get her eventually, but this team is a distraction team. If you can make your Paplu kind of fast, then your opponent will not will not expect how fast and how crazy, <laughs> how uh, extremely vicious this this Ewok team can be, especially with with an Omicron on Chirpa, which I don't recommend, by the way. But uh, it does. We do have the Chirpa Omicron. May as well use it. Uh, this will get like one hold a season, uh, maybe less, honestly. Um, but Nisa's gonna be a big part of that. We don't care about a Datacron here because 
it at the end of the day. I, I bought I bought the pack for them, the light speed bundle, just because I put them on defense. Eventually we'll get Nisa up because she's a Leia requirement, but then we can put a Datacron on them. It's not gonna get holds, but it might tempt someone into using being a little overzealous or underzealous and using like a nest team. Nisa will just stop nest from beating your team uh, now, which is nice. Uh, Ray is probably the biggest linchpin here, guys. Um, you want to have, and we have the Holdocron, the biggest addition to this team that we have this season, guys, um, is going, is, is, um, it's, it's fairly exciting, folks. I haven't used him yet. Um, I don't even have all of his Omicrons or Zetas, but we do have Ben at Relic 5 now. Very exciting times. We unlocked him from Proving Grounds, but this team will get a lot of holds because we have a good Datacron. People don't know how to deal with a Cron like Holdo's Cron, and we're going to take advantage of that, right? And then I jokingly call this my Zero Zeta team because it's full of T of characters. Well, it's got like two characters that are decent. None of them have a date. You can't have a Datacron with a Gear 12 character, and honestly, no, none of them have Zetas. This, this team never gets holds, I don't expect it to. And so you can see there's just this mix. They give Darth Revan, who people will overreact to. Ray, people might not know how to deal with her. And then the other two, the Ewoks and the, the No Zeta team, are just garbage. In the back, usually garbage. I bought the Lightspeed Bundle for Geo, so that, that might get me zero holds, as per usual. Um, and then we have this really bad like just trash team and then this phasma team this might be a team that we take off just because you could use it on offense because of with a good uh first order cron but we'll, we'll have to see about that um i don't even think i have it listed on my best teams list and then up top is another mixed bag so we've got supreme leader kylo uh see we don't have the right cron on here because that we didn't have that cron last time but we do we did have a cron so uh, at this point, we probably, we could just use the Supreme Leader Kylo. Though we don't have the level six, so maybe maybe we do, you know, the first order TIE pilot one. And then we throw someone out on their ear. Uh, Stormtrooper, sure. And um, and add the first order uh, TIE pilot, whatever. You guys, I'll do that all in the, in the background. But that's what this, that, you know, so this team is supposed to get those kind of holds. Um, the Grievous team was supposed to trip people up, potentially, but now we have Stap, and we need him on offense, um, especially with his Datacron. We have this Pets team, which gets me at least one hold per season, which is the silliest thing possible. It is not intended to be that good. We only have a couple Zetas. I don't know why I have Zetas on, on Tarful, but, man, we just need one Wookiee, guys. I, I would love it if they gave us another, like, a, a, one of the Jedi Wookiees would be amazing. Um, and then I have my Phoenix squad here. I might take him off of defense. I've been working on Rex. He's almost to gear 13. And then you can start killing, like, Inquisition with him, which is pretty handy. I don't know who we're going to replace him with, though. So uh, that, that's kind of the idea, though, folks. Just put garbage in the back zone. And then a combination of teams that will trip up or just get a rock-solid hold on defense. And then... Uh, and then some garbage teams that your opponent your opponent already has an excess of good teams like you're not gonna have to worry that it's like oh how are they gonna execute me like with with like that gun or that gun or that gun or that gun like and any will suffice so you may as well just throw in a garbage team any garbage team will do as long as you're not gonna drop a ton of banners now let's actually talk about the real teams and i'm gonna write down the timestamps once again all right so let's talk about the teams that I will be playing. This is not the right one, though, I think. Yeah, okay. All right, guys. So I already kind of showed you the two teams that we'll be working with. Uh, they'll probably be on defense. The big question is, can I find a way to beat Jedi Master Kenobi? I do have a way to beat him with a Catme squad, like a, with Padme plus Cat. You can beat... You can beat Kenobi. Yeah, I don't think you can beat the current version of Kenobi. However, with with what I what I currently have, um, uh, with, with the Catme team, because the the Kenobi team with Padme is going to be super disgusting. And if that's the case, then we need to either just double down and just go half zone style on those guys, just put two Galactic Legends in one zone, or we could always. Uh, we, we could always just <clears throat> take Supreme Leader Kylo on 
offense, sometimes I'm able to take him out. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, Ray on defense. I mean, my my default, guys, for Ray is almost always just going to be with Ben and Jedi Training Ray in 3v3. And then, usually, guys, if you have a Zori team, Resistance Hero Finn probably wants to go on the Zori team. But I don't have a Zori team. I don't have anything approaching a Zori team. So he can go here. And then Holdo, she's actually not a bad choice, even without a really transcendent, amazing Datacron. But she's even better here. You note that I don't have all my Zetas here, including on Jedi Training Ray or... I mean, on any of them. Not, none of them have their full number of Zetas, including Rey herself. It's crazy. Um, just, I put one on Kanan recently, and then I realized that I don't have all of them on my two Galactic Legs. I, I, I'm crazy, guys. I, I am certified crazy. And you can see, some of them don't actually have the little red dot next to their name, which means... I don't even have enough to apply one Zeta. I don't even think I'm close. I don't think I can apply half of a Zeta if I needed to, yeah. Six. Whoa. Okay. But we're starting to get there on the mods, and you know, we're getting him we're getting him squared away here, folks. He's not he's not gonna be that fast as I want him to, but he is good. Um, and then that's the end of our GLs here. So what else are we doing, folks? And here's the thing. Uh, the only other way, so I, I told you, we're, we can get destroyed by people who know what they're doing, right? Well, if we don't know what we're doing, we'll also get destroyed. And in, even by people who don't know what they're doing. Sometimes you just get destroyed anyways, and it's, it's embarrassing. But, and it, have you ever lost to someone who didn't know well enough to, like, they just, they put Ezra on a Qui-Gon Jinn team? On defense, it's like, oh, I got Jin. that's a decent team on defense. Oh, but Ezra totally invalidates a ton of the rules that they have, and it just kind of ruins things. And then you proceed to lose to that person anyways. Well, that happens on an account like this, because we're, we're never, we're never overmatching our opponents. It's like, when we do face someone with less GP than us, which is very rare, it's kind of scary, because they probably also know what they're doing, and they probably have more Datacrons than I do. So... <clears throat> Anyways, Admiral Radis is one of those teams where we get kind of, we kind of get our money back. Now you can see on on all my accounts, guys, Baze has become kind of a priority for me to farm. I mean, he's not the most priority, but at, at eight point two million, yeah, he's very worthwhile. Even at three star or at relic three, he does a lot of stuff. But the real trick here, guys, is Admiral Radis with Jin, Admiral Radis. Uh, there's so many good Empire teams out there, folks, including Inquisition, which they have a Kron right now. We don't. We want to leave them alone. But teams like Dark Trooper Moff Gideon that people will have that we have to face. Uh, people will have teams like Aiden that we're going to have to face. And sometimes we can use Wampa on the Aiden teams. And sometimes we need something even better. Sometimes they'll have, like, Tuscans. This team is something that I beat something with on this account almost every time unless they just put place the entire world on defense in which case we kind of struggle a little bit more uh, and and add rad uh, sometimes he'll still find a way to be relevant but he's a very good character uh, and, and team and this is one of the reasons you want to get profundity early because this team it's remarkable guys seriously if you haven't tried them yet give them a try they're a lot of fun um, they're kind of a, the take-all comers. They, they, they beat all the B and worse level teams. Now, uh, we have the Seer Malakos team. Uh, it, so I'm trying to figure out what I want to do. Uh, first off, if you... I have Maul, so I can put Maul in this in this slot here, the, like the final slot. But I have Reva at Relic 5. I kind of just want to try using her instead of so crew can be used here maul can be used here the the goal for this team is always to kill your opponent's ray team if you they don't have a ray team sometimes your opponents will surprise you you're like oh look at that you have seven gls and one of them the one that you don't have is ray that this team can can kill i mean tons of stuff they can kill a supreme leader kylo squad they can do a lot of stuff um but Maul has been traditionally what I use as a character to keep Malakos uh, assisting. You can see I put all I put all the Omicrons on him and on Seer. Very worthwhile. Um, 
I, I'm curious to see how they're gonna do with Third Sister, especially because we can use the Third Sister Kron, which isn't like the best, but you can, th there might be some interesting interactions. So we'll just have to see on that count, but uh, we may end up swapping for Maul. I, I put kind of a weird, kind of disgraceful mod, or Maul team a little bit lower, and we'll, we'll see if We'll see if that has legs at all. But the goal of this is to kill May or, or to kill Ray, and if there's not Ray, find another Galactic Legend or something smaller to pummel to death. Um, and then we have CLS. This team might go on defense for me. A lot of people don't realize that Phoenix just ruin CLS at this point. Uh, so if they, if they realize that, then maybe I wouldn't put this team on defense. But put a thick run on them. A lot of times people don't know how to avoid that, like how to get through a team that has double hit points. The one big question mark is. Am I going to miss C-3PO? You kind of need C-3PO for offense for the Catmay team to work. So, if that's the case, uh, then maybe this team needs to stay on offense. That's the one reason I would keep it on offense on this account, um, is C-3PO is fairly important for the Catmay team when needed. Now, here's the disgraceful Maul team. And the idea here, guys, I don't have a good Watt, but he does have his Zeta, which means he takes his bonus turn at the start. It triggers Maul's starting frenzy. He does an AoE, and then Candorous will assist, presumably get a bunch of turn meter from all the assists, do his AoE, hand Maul the turn from frenzy again, and then Maul will call everyone to assist and will be in the promised land. Uh, Bando is here because... We need, we need a fifth sometimes, and he's a Mandalorian. Uh, he's not great here specifically, but he does okay. I mean, he'll he'll he'll, he'll interject his opinion if, if Candorous or Jango are going to die a little prematurely. That's great. Uh, he probably belongs a little bit more on a dash team, but the dash team is already a little bit full. We'll have to figure out what, what to do with them. And that, that's why I like to have a lot of these interchangeable pieces on each team kind of just available and then we can mix and match, which is something I can't really like prescribe. Like, oh, first do this, then do this. Like, it's not like a, it's not like a, a, a ten-step, twelve-step program or process. It, what it really is is uh, it, like it's it's us knowing what we're doing, right? It's it's us showing that we're superior in gameplay. They're superior in roster play and foreplay potentially. I can't back any of that up actually that's all unsubstantiated and I don't even know why I added it like five play even but here's here's the thing this is the kind of team that could win us the whole match if it's fight if it's facing the right thing like this will kill a bounty hunter team I know that's not that impressive um it'll kill it'll take out a few surprisingly stronger teams than you were used to um and that might be the final that's like, oh man, we burned all of our other teams on stuff. We need, just need to kill one more team, and this is it. Um, or sometimes we'll just throw Maul on that Seer Malikos team and throw Bando with uh, with uh, Dash, and then this team just won't really exist. We'll use Watt with like Darth Vader or something like that um, to do like a Build-A-Bear kind of team. You just never know what you're going to do. So it's good to have these kind of squads mapped out a little bit, but it's good to have a lot of uh, flexibility on offense as well, just so you can be adaptable. Um, all right, so my Jedi have traditionally been extremely bad on this account, and I, I stand by that. We're still really bad at Jedi on this account. Um, <laughs> I have a oh man, let, let me just let me, you want to see you want to get sad for a minute here. Are my Jedi on this account. Um, so I have Jedi Knight Luke at gear seven, and it's because I unlocked him at the same time I unlocked Ben and Bane. So, who, who should I work on first, between those two? And now I'm working on getting IG-12 and Keller and Beck work, working on this account. And so, so that I can unlock bo Mandalore. So that's three more characters that I'm going to have to Relic 7, at least. Probably bo wants to be Relic 8, at least. And, and then Luke gets to come in 4th place. And before that, he was like 6th or 7th place on the list, which is crazy, because he's such a good character, but otherwise, 
We, we just don't have that many good Jedi, folks. Like, the, our list of allies grows thin indeed. Um, and it's it's very sad. I hope you're sad as well, uh, because uh, how does it go? Misery loves company. Uh, poor Jedi uh, love love observance, apparently. So, the, these the, here's the thing, though. I've, I have Jedi Cal. He's Relic 7, so I can do the Zepho mission, which I've passed every time I've tried. And I'm kind of an idiot, because I forgot to try it last time. I just deployed, and then I was like, oh... Right, I didn't deploy on the right planet, now I can't do that mission. So, <clears throat> I am 100% on the times that I've done the mission, though. And the idea here, folks, is to break it into two teams that are decent. Now, if I had good General Skywalker 501st, I would get the damage reduction level 6 for Galactic Republic Datacrons and throw it on General Skywalker and the 501st and have them be their own separate team. But, I have absolutely garbage... 501st. They're, they're not even on our list, guys, because of how garbage... Look how garbage they are. They're not good. Um, in fact, they are... Ugh. I'm, I'm cringing right now, even. Even now. So instead, we throw our 3 Zeta, General Skywalker, on a team with Keller and Beck, with the Keller and Beck, Kron. I don't have Kieti Mundi. I'm not even halfway to unlocking him. So the, the idea is the Keller and Beck team, we might throw him on defense. Uh... And then just keep the Jedi Revan for offense. The thing is, Mace might want to go with Jedi Revan, so maybe we'll find... I don't know if we can find another Galactic Republic Jedi that works here. We'll have to see, but Keller and Beck may very well end up on defense for me, for this season at least. And then the Jedi Revan team, which is really the Jedi Cal team, is... Uh, you know, Kyle Katarn is kind of fun. He does his Jedi training pretty well, because there's so many assists on this team. Um... It's, it's not bad. I, I don't know, guys. There, there's there's a lot of question marks. The Keller and Beck team, I intended initially for the, it to be a Galactic Legend killer. And then I didn't roll very good protection percentages on the Datacron itself. And I, I couldn't get the relics on the team very high. I just, I, I just broke the bank, basically, trying to get Yoda from Relic 1 to Relic 3 just like a few hours ago. Because I need him to be Relic 3 so we can use Keller and Beck's Datacron. Anyways, this team would be decent on defense. People wouldn't, would, would uh, totally underestimate this low of Relics. But it might, it might be helpful on offense too. Um, I like on my main account, someone attacked my Keller and Beck team with Lord Vader. And they just straight up lost the full Lord Vader team. So... Things like that can happen, especially if you put General Skywalker in there, who already hits like a truck, but with under Keller and Beck's wise tutelage, he really does hit very, very hard. Now, we have Starkiller, and Starkiller used to be our way to kill Rey, and that still may happen if we face people who don't have good Datacrons. That might happen. Um, more likely, so more and more people are getting Jabba, which is great. I advise people to get Jabba. He's the best and most foundational and important galactic legend in the game he just is he's, he's very important and uh so a lot of people will have him how do you kill them throw him on defense because they don't know how to use him on offense he's intimidating to use he there's a lot of cool stuff you can do with him on offense if you know what you're doing most people don't know what they're doing at which is kind of the premise of this account anyways and so what well, I'll I'll kill I'm working on a guide. I keep promising this guys, but it's true. I'm I am genuinely working on a guide on how to kill Jabba with Star Killer. And this team will do it for us. It's mostly just abusing Emperor Palpatine's shock uh, rules on his basic and, and then his leadership combined with, with some other things that are cool. But uh, just just you you can do some really funny things. You can you can you can halt Jabba from moving, even from like wiggling, from writhing. Uh, yeah, I'm grossed out now. So, yeah, this team this team is probably intended for that, or maybe if I'm <laughs> if I'm feeling lucky, maybe trying to kill like a a Finn Zori team. I mean that that'll work every time unless they have a really good data con and a really good team comp, in which case our win chances go down to zero. Maybe one day I'll get enough relics to put uh, more than relic five on Star Kelly. It feels so dumb. How do how is how do I have him at relic five? 
and, and then a ton of other characters who were better than him at just Relic, yeah, at, at Relic 7 or 8. All right, Darth Bane here um, with Darth Vader. Uh, Vader's not the ideal person to go with Bane, but what I realized once I got Bane is, especially in fives and threes, you can kind of you can kind of fudge it a little bit. But I don't have any good high level Sith that I that are expendable right now. Not on this account. I, I just don't have that many. Like look, look at the Sith when I take the unique away. Here, look, look at all the Sith. That I don't have here, folks. Not that you want you want high relics because that's what feeds into and makes Bane stronger. So we have like Palpatine, Revan, Malak, Treya, uh, Talon, uh, Red Trooper, Basti, Sia. Like all of these characters are, have teams that they need to be on, and then eventually you get to the point where they don't have relic levels, and there's no point in using them with Bane. And so. I have Vader here because I don't have a specific plan for him right now, and he is Relic 7. Is he expendable? I mean, I, I, I would really ideally like to use him sometimes on offense, but sometimes you just gotta let Bane feed. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? So, uh, next we have the Darth Revan team, probably just on defense. And one day, I will find the wherewithal to upgrade my speed on him. 316 is not good. Talon does surprise people with her granting an extra 20 speed. So, 3 to 36. But, yeah, one day, we'll get better mods. And then we'll upgrade the team. Probably not. That's probably a lie. Now, I did recently get Range Trooper up to gear 12. Just because of his absolutely amazing utility. And I'd rather him not just die with one shot. He was like gear 8 or something. So, this team, uh, you know, you, it hinges around Admiral Pet Piet. If, if I don't want to, and in a little bit you'll see where Moff Gideon is. I don't have Dark Trooper Moff Gideon as a usable team right now. I do have him farmed. He's gear 1. Uh, maybe I didn't even unlock him. I, I don't remember. But one way or another, this team is going to be opportunistic. It, it'll kill a bad team, basically. Um, eventually, we'll get Aiden up to a point where we can actually just use them to counter Lord Vader squads. But for now, just stay on, stay as an opportunistic offensive support. Okay. Now we have Dash here. Um, and I have Cat May on the dash, or Cat on the dash team, because she boosts scout, light side scoundrels. But then I also have her on the Padme team because she she can also boost that. Like this is the this is actually the Cat May team that takes down uh, Jedi Master Kenobi. So, uh, but of course, Datacrons allowing. But yeah, they'll, they'll take on Kenobi. Uh, dash. Would he likes the 50% offense boost quite a bit, but he doesn't absolutely need it. We could throw Best Garmando in here. We could throw even if we don't have Bam to spare because he wants to go with. He could go with uh, that that Maul team. We could also go with like a Bounty Hunter team to take out Lord Vader in some comps. Um, so Bam might not always be here. Cat might also might sometimes be with Padme to kill things, or sometimes Cat will be here. This team will happily hunt Jedi Master Luke until the the sun goes down. It works until it doesn't. Like right now, there's a Datacron for Jedi that allows zero revives, which can be problematic, of course, for a dash team that relies on revives. But Beyond that, one day maybe we'll afford the Zeta for IG-11, um, and yeah, this this team is uh, this team. That that's why I preach flexibility, guys. We who have to be flexible, or you can't beat some of these crazy rosters. That's just how it works. So, and sometimes even if you are flexible, you still just become the nail uh, to their hammer. Uh, so, uh, if if we're using this version of Dash with Cat. Then Padme becomes a kind of awkward team, and you know we'll use C-3PO with CLS, um, and Cat won't be here. So we'll have Padme and Kenobi and Ahsoka, which is one of the reasons I would like to maybe take Keller and Beck for offense, because then Kenobi and Snips can actually be used on the on that team, and you could kind of boot uh, Mace over to the Jedi Revan team if you needed to. 
lots of things to contemplate. And if that happens, then Padme has this really awkward Gidme team. So we have Catme and Gidme. Gidme is a team that you don't need high relics as long as Moff Gideon gets a turn first, which I don't have him in my fastest mods, obviously, but uh, we, we can give him another 20 speed just by adding gear, which which is nice. Um, once, so he'll reduce all the turn meter. Of course, Padme's characters, or her squad, refuse to drop their turn meter. And so then they get first turn, they get a bunch of courage, and that courage gets to just assassinate a lot of things. This is a really fun team against the right squads so if you know how to use it great it's just one more iteration of things we could use we could also use moff gideon uh, to very good effect with imperial troopers depending on our target it just depends on that flexibility now we also have bounty hunters i have a gear 11 or a sing a gear 11 zam and uh, with the Omicron, so we can do a lot of interesting stuff. I think my favorite comp is actually booting Boba off of the team, adding Beskar Mando, and then going going at Lord Vader with uh, a Bounty Hunter squad. Probably one of my favorite squads to use, even if it's not that super high percentage winning, it's still fun. Uh, Wampa, my poor mal malnourished uh, Wampa, he's Relic 4, people are always like, dude, just use Wampa, I'm like, you, if you've seen his mods, you would not feel nearly as confident as you sound right now, because Wampa, he's great, I love Wampa, uh, he, he could really use a, some kind of boost, like, release the Beastmaster character, CG, please, I know I said that in one of my previous videos, but that would be fun, something similar to how Cal, Baby Cal, and... Uh, Fulcrum Ahsoka have like Omicrons that kind of activate each other to be used in a squad in Territory Wars. I would love that. Something, some kind of thing like that for Wampa. Because he's less and less relevant, especially in Fives. He's a really great, you know what he is? He's the guy who makes you feel better about failing an attack. You're like, oh, okay. Well, I killed some of their characters, and now we can get four of our banners back using Wampa as a solo to get some of those banners back. And then and then the then I don't it's like in singing sound of music and then I don't feel so bad, you know? Uh, there's there's no doe or deer or female deer or an, any of that here though guys. Just just then I don't feel so bad. Um <laughs> and that's not always the case. Treya with Savage with their Omicrons, uh, probably two of the best starting Omicrons to place, because this team, I mean, maybe not the very best first ones, but maybe. They're, they're a very strong squad, a very good tandem, you can also split them apart. Typically, especially because this account does not have enough Sith that are worthwhile, I'm probably going to keep them for offense, and then something I don't really do, I kind of missed my opportunity. If I had started this account a little bit, uh, you know, if I had been playing in lower leagues, you can use Savage to solo some teams, and then Treya will three-man a lot of teams. That's probably still technically possible, but in Kyber 2, a lot of times we're out relic to the degree that Savage at Relic 3 is going to really struggle to beat those teams into submission over the course of five minutes. If he had 10 minutes, maybe. Now, we do have Stap, and ironically, he is the highest Relic character. I guess he's tied with Magna Guard, but it, it's a very silly situation, folks, because Grievous is Relic 4. He's our damage dealer, uh, but the mechanics with the Omicron combined with the Datacron make this team kill all the Jedi Master Luke teams, and even more importantly, all of the Leia teams. Galactic Legend Leia gets laid bare hmm, with this team. She just gets destroyed uh, with, with Grievous and Stap. It's a lot of fun, and I do have the Datacron. This is the thing I was talking about earlier when I said I just chase Datacrons and let them kind of dictate my farming a little bit, which leads to some interesting and fun powerful squads, but also it lands you in awkward places where your one character that you need Relic 5 to use the Datacron on 
is the highest relic level character, including your major, your main damage dealer. It's it's very sad. Um, so Nice Sisters, I, I'm arguing on Marin. I, I bought the Nice Sisters light speed bundle, as you can see. Uh, Marin is not included in that bundle, unfortunately, and so she has her Omicron. Eventually, I even put her gear 12 finisher piece on, so it, so it won't take too much longer. We're done with Kyrotech on her at least. Um, and then, I, I don't know, maybe I'll start modding her to kill Jabba, though I think Starkiller in fives does just fine, and it's way more consistent than using Night Sisters. Otherwise, you kill General Grievous squads. This squad, if depending on what the comp is, you'll also kill some of the Fin Fin Zori teams if they're not crazy high relics, well modded, etc. This team can kind of sneak in and do do the do its business. Uh, Geos, as far as I'm concerned, they're they're kind of just a dead squad at this point, folks. I know that in territory wars they're fine; they do okay with the Poggle Omicron. Um, otherwise, the Brood Alpha is a really good plug and play character. I just don't have any characters that need plug and play tank right now, and instead. Maybe I have an opponent who has run out of teams and doesn't have the right counter to Geo's without it being a fairly messy fight. So could put them on I put them on defense. You can give them offense, but what do you kill with them even, folks? In Kyber 2? I would love to hear you guys telling me how you just murder the hell out of all the things, and then I find out that you're actually in Chromium. That's gonna happen. We're gonna have that happen. That that does. In fact, I see that a lot. So, uh, anyways, we're we're nearly to the bottom of this list, folks. We have the Chirpa, Ewok team. Nisa is part of the best version of it. If you put a, a different, if you put the Ewok Elder in, you will, and you put this on team on defense, you will get soloed by Nest. Nest will beat that whole team with Nisa. Nest is no longer a lock, and in fact, if you have a gear 13 Nisa, that that Nest is almost certainly not going to beat your, your murder bears. Um, finally, uh, apparently, we're already, that's so crazy we're already done. Um, oh yeah, because we didn't add the Phasma team, because it sucks. Uh, Hera with Captain Rex. You can see that shiny new Zeta on Kanan. The dude didn't even say thanks. I actually kind of think he doesn't even know who applied the Zeta, now that I'm thinking of it, because of his obvious limitations, um, which we're not looking down on him at all for, <laughs> though maybe he's mad about us being able to do that. Uh, we have Captain Rex here. This is one of the few accounts that I have where I'm not tempted to throw Rex on a different squad, because I don't have a good C squad, I don't have a good Leia squad, and... That, that's kind of what you need. Like, I don't have a good, like, Mon Mothma team. Not that that's really going to be... Uh, how's, how's that going to work? Mothra with Rex and Luthen? Sounds really interesting to me. I'm, I'm intrigued. But, anyways, folks. This team will kill... I, I have them on defense right now from last season. I kind of think we just throw them on offense and kill Inquisition with them. Uh, if we do that, we gotta throw <laughs> through, throw this this uh, Zated Kanan off the team and put L3 there so that then they, we have a pre-taunt, they do their initial attacks to kill the pre-taunt and then it, it ensures that you have Sabine and Rex still alive so that you're able to um, withstand their initial barrage and win the fight. Uh, so. That's it, folks. That's that's what we're doing here. Uh, that's, you know, we do this every season. I'm, I'm giving a lot of thought, folks. I'm, I'm trying to figure out which account should I try dropping. I, I can only have three. Three is my breaking point. Uh, I'm almost considering dumping this account. Even though we've made such good progress on it, it would kind of be fun to re-roll and start a new account. I haven't decided yet. I would actually love to hear the people who have stayed to this long. I feel like they deserve at least a say. I'm not going to call it a vote because this is a dictatorship. And, I mean, very similar to Arnold's empire. Uh, you know, this this is this is more uh, despotism, more more than anything. I, I just uh, I just don't even care, man. No, I, I like to hear what your thoughts are, though, folks, and especially the people who will watch a, a whole <laughs> hour-long video. 
uh, should I get rid of this account and start a new one, maybe buy the hyperdrive bundle to accelerate things, or just maybe just experience the CG, like the vaunted, oh, hey, the new player experience, you get to level 85 really fast. Maybe we do that. I would love to hear your guys' thoughts on it, though. I feel sad to dump this account, but on the other hand, I don't invest much in it any- I haven't invested much in it anyways. Might be good to relearn that new player experience. Let me know in the comments. Let me know what your thoughts are on defense. Have I made any major tactical flaws? Was there something you would like to see in this kind of long form content where I'm covering all the different aspects of dominating your opponent in 5v5? I, I would love to hear it. Uh, genuinely, guys. Um, not being disingenuous. Someone accused me of that the other day. They're like, you don't really want to hear from us. I'm like, you know what? I learned a lot from you guys. I really do. You just have to have the right attitude and the right uh, mentality to learn from people. Uh, so, all right, I'm rambling. It's time for me to go to bed. Thank you all so much for watching, guys. And remember that in all things, Zareth prevails. And so does Prevail Man.